How many of you are involved with um, organic produce or food and logistics? Um, I wanted to kind of start off by telling you a little bit about the, um, the organics and what organics are and the demand um, and how the, that uh, segment of the food industry has pretty much exploded. Um, Destiny Organics began more than 10 years ago as Destiny Produce. We were a conventional produce house on the Atlanta State Farmers Market and we serviced all the large retail chains with um, a lot of their conventional produce. So as the need um, became evident for these large retailers that they were going to have to include organic uh, produce and food in their offerings, whether they wanted to or not, we were in the Southeast pretty much the go-to people to, to make this happen. Um, we got our organic certification. Um, what organic certification means for a distributor is that we have to abide by a lot of rules that are also in third-party audits as far as food safety, bioterrorism, um, any of those, any of those um, issues have to be, uh, they're also included in organic certification as well as 100% traceability. Um, uh, our building has, is inspected once a year for um, our organic renewal. And um, as far as organic certification for, for produce, um, that is uh, established by the National Organic Program and there's every state and just about, not every country, but most countries have their own certifying agencies. Ours here in Georgia is Georgia Crop and that's who I am certified by and that's who a large part of the farmers here are, are certified by. And certified organic for farmers means that their land has lain um, completely free of pesticides. Usually takes a farmer three years to go from using pesticides to um, Georgia crop or a certifying agency to declare that their land is now free of pesticides. So in moving past, moving forward from conventional to organic, that was back in 2004. Um, the organic movement has made great strides since 1990, um, but still back in 2004, it was a thing that people didn't quite understand how to deal with. And that was either, that was large <coughs> retailers, independent retailers, um, people just didn't understand. A lot of people, especially some of my um, friends on the state farmer's market, thought that it was a phase, that it was a fad, it was going to go away. Um, to the contrary, uh, it's the largest growing segment in the food business. A lot of that is propelled by food safety, food scares. Um, all of the studies that have come out about the effects of pesticides and hormones and antibiotics in our um, produce and foods that, and the effects it is having on our bodies as well as those of our children. So um, with that, when the economy um, was taking a serious downturn, um, it was a little scary to be um, Destiny Organics and with people's mindset that, oh my gosh, that is way more expensive, we can't eat, we can't do that. But actually, with all of the aforementioned food scares and studies that have come out, it has um, done nothing but increase the demand for organics and all natural foods. So I wanted to kind of give you an idea of the, you know, how it's, how it's growing. We um, have gone past just uh, supplying large retail into independent retailers and health food stores all over the southeast. We're now involved with schools, with the farm to school movement, as well as some hospitals that are integrating healthy food into their institutions. Um, great example is St. Jude Research Hospital in Memphis. And um, they are taking out all the bad food, putting in all the good food, and that's being you know, propelled by their executive chef that is bound and determined to do this for the children in there that, that are in there for, uh, these treatments, knowing that uh, pesticides are a leading cause of cancer in children. 
So um, the demand is there. Um, something that you're probably not aware of is the growing demand in co-ops and buying clubs, and that's home deliveries of organic foods. Um, one of my customers is a husband and wife that's in North Carolina. We deliver to them three days a week, and they home deliver 1,000 produce boxes a week. And um, it's, it's just unbelievable how that has grown. I live in not a really remote area, but I live in the area about 45 minutes south of it, of the farmer's market, and there's no organic produce there. So um, I think that has been a big reason why this has, has grown such as it has, is people want to eat healthy. Um, so I wanted to... Um, also, also, along with the demand, that means that there's way more organic growers and shippers, and especially in um, California, which is the, the leader in organic acreage of, of farmland. So um, from being a conventional produce buyer that was loading trucks in California that maybe the truck had two or three picks, it, uh, with organics, it can be anywhere from six to eight picks. Um, it makes it a little bit difficult and, um, with the trucking companies because, especially now with the freight rates. Um, so a lot of uh, what I do, um, especially in California, is use a consolidator so that I've got, especially right now where I'm loading all the way from Salinas <coughs> down to Brawley to Nogales, um, we're using um, consolidators on the LA market so that I might have anywhere from 10 to 15 pallets in there, which is simplifying it and keeping my freight rate down um, at the same time. Um, one of the things I look for in, in choosing um, my logistics, my um, freight carriers, is a, a bit of an understanding about organics and especially for the LTL carriers, because by my, my certifications, there are a few things that have to happen. All of my paperwork has to state on there that the product is organic. And I have to have organic certifications from all of these shippers before I can let that produce or food come into my warehouse. Um, another thing is that um, I ask the drivers, the freight carriers to make sure that not only the paperwork is correct, but also that the labeling on the boxes and the product itself is also organic. And this is kind of a tough thing because I'm having to go through a dispatcher that is in turn, you know, needs to know about my company and about my requirements. If I've got an LT, you know, if I'm doing an LTL, they have to know that they can't put a half pallet of conventional produce on top of my half pallet of organic produce in order to get it to me. That I can't do that in my warehouse and I can't do that on a truck. So they have to have a little bit of knowledge about, about organics and about uh, segregation and about, you know, all of the items that I'm bound by by my certification, which is um, paperwork and labeling. Um, the biggest, uh, probably the biggest problem or challenge I have, and, and um, as, a, as a small distributor here in the southeast, is being actively involved in the farm-to-table movement. And, and I spend a lot of my time going out and talking at conferences, farmer conferences, and encouraging farmers to transition from using pesticides to at least all natural and preferably organic. And you know, talking to them about the, the demand and that the demand is out, uh, exceeding the supply right now. Um, but that brings on new challenges for, for local um, logis logistics companies because these are small farms, um, small, medium, and large farms actually, all over the southeast, even here in Georgia, that make uh, transportation um, very challenging. Um, some of these uh, farmers are ill-prepared to actually warehouse, and it has to be um, pretty much timed um, pickups. I do a lot of backhauling with my trucks, but uh, the, the Southeast is very much in need of, of trucking companies that are willing to go above and beyond 
and also to, to do a lot of LTL freight um, because there's, there's really not a whole lot of organics. There's, there's a few times that I'm loading straight loads here in the southeast, but more often than not it's LTLs and it is a little bit trickier, of course, and um, a little bit challenging down here in the southeast dealing with our farmers. However, um, the, the demand is definitely there and, and, it keeps, and it keeps growing. There's more and more farmers here in the southeast that are transitioning. And um, again, I'll repeat that the, um, the biggest challenge that I have right now is transportation here in the southeast. And um, that's, the, that's probably the biggest obstacle and the biggest missing piece from farm to table. Is, uh, is freight carriers that are willing to, to go that extra mile, and especially here in the southeast, to um, get the product to my dock to, for me to get it out to people's tables.